This isn't the video I intended to make. It was supposed to be a review of the Intel Arc A380, specifically this ASRock Challenger model. But that's not what the end product would become. Ooh, is it a brutal takedown of the budget Alchemist GPU? No, it's not that either. If you like stories with endings, stories where every question is answered and tied up in a neat little bow, I'm sorry to disappoint you. There isn't a happy ending waiting for you at the end of this video. What is then? Why am I wasting your time if not to tell you one way or another if a graphics card's worth buying? Isn't that my job after all? Well, yes. But I couldn't do that this time. This isn't a review or a rant. It's a cry for help. The plan was simple, make the A380 video nobody else has. I was going to compare it to a couple of other entry level GPUs like the GTX 1650 Super and RX 580 and yes thank you that was a bold new vision for a review I know. The thing I was going to do differently was to try pairing it with lower end CPUs. I've heard from my friends over at Hardware Lab that Arc has a high driver overhead, and I wanted to establish whether that would affect owners of older or cheaper PCs, the kind of customers a sub £150 graphics card might attract. To set a baseline, I started my game tests as usual in the moderately priced gaming PC, with the intent of then retesting them with the Ryzen 3 3100 later on. As I started entering the data into my spreadsheet, I couldn't help but notice that this was bad. Really, really bad. Worse than a vanilla GTX 1650 in some cases. 42 FPS in Spider-Man, 52 in Forza Horizon 5 at medium, 41 in Halo Infinite. These aren't even 2023 games. The notorious titles designed to write off 90% of the existing GPU ecosystem as obsolete. The Last of Us managed 35 FPS at 1080 low with Performance FSR. Starfield only hit 25 at the same settings, and this is the new update, which at the time of testing is still in beta. And don't get me started on Alan Wake 2. If these numbers were accurate, the RK380 was far worse than I thought. But that was the question. Was this accurate? Was the A380 really this bad? Or was I doing something wrong? As absurd as that notion seemed, the final straw came in the Time Spy test. I usually include these as a courtesy as I don't place much value in them myself, but when it completed with a graphics score of just under 3100, I knew something was up. The average A380 graphics score is about 50% higher than this. What gives? Let's lay things out first and foremost. At the start of the test I was using my usual PC, a Ryzen 5 5600X, 32 gigs of DDR4 3600 CL16 in the form of two mismatched 16 gig kits, a Gigabyte B550 Gaming XV2 motherboard, a Vitru V5 tower cooler, a 1TB WD Blue boot SSD and a 2TB WD Black game drive. So far, nothing I've ever thrown at this setup has suffered more than the occasional CPU bottleneck. It's not cutting edge Zen 4 and DDR5, but it should be more than sufficient for a relatively low end GPU. The possible explanations for this problem fall into two categories, software and hardware. For software, I first looked at the drivers. From what I understand of Intel's graphics cards, they're still working hard to get drivers up to scratch and updates are arriving thick and fast. Sure enough, the 4952 drivers I downloaded at 9am had been replaced by the 4953 drivers by 9pm, and these are WHQL, so if there was a problem caused by the drivers, then surely these would be the solution. Right? Well, no. The Time Spy score remained stubbornly unchanged, so whatever magic was being done at Intel HQ didn't fix my issue. How about rolling back? Maybe the old 4887 drivers from October would be the solution. It's not the first time I've had to do this. Nvidia Maxwell cards developed a performance bug in Halo Infinite and Guardians of the Galaxy that could only be resolved by rolling back to older drivers. 
Again though, there was no improvement in the A380's Time Spy scores. I could have gone back further and further through the archives, but I feel like if Intel's drivers had been ruining GPU performance for more than a month, I'd have heard about it by now. There'd be articles. How about an installation problem? I always use DDU to remove drivers between GPU swaps anyway, but to be on the safe side, I DDU'd and reinstalled 4887, to no avail. I then did the same with 4953, and yeah, no improvement. Enough about drivers then, what about Time Spy itself? Perhaps the 3D Mark software package needed updating, and that why I was getting a terrible score. Leaving aside the frankly even worse implication that the A380 really was this bad in games and that Time Spy alone was the problem, I checked the software and there was indeed an update. I downloaded it and... No, no improvements. If anything, that was actually a relief. By this point, some of you might be shouting at your screen, but Iceberg, what about resizable bar? You haven't said anything about resizable bar! Resizable bar! And to that I say, yes, thank you for pointing that out. This is my first ever graphics card review, and I'm exactly the kind of dickhead who'd forget to enable the rebar in an Intel GPU test despite it being explicitly recommended. Actually, when I posed the question in my community tab, someone did suggest turning rebar off, and I actually did give that a try. I mean, it's not like other computer problems haven't been solved by turning things off and on again. But aside from gaining about 100 points without rebar, it wasn't really of any major benefit. I also tried manually turning the PCI Express slot to Gen 4, and swapping PCIe slots. Rebar's on, my system's in UEFI boot mode, my drive partition's a GPT, I washed my hands and said a prayer to Pat Gelsinger and nothing seemed to work. If changing the software wasn't solving my problem, the next best solution was a change in hardware. I don't currently have any Gen 4 systems to hand other than my editing rig, which is a Ryzen 7 5700X on an ASUS Tough motherboard with two sticks of Dom Platt rather than my mongrel RAM setup I have on my test bench. So I swapped out my 6900XT in my editing rig for the A380, DDU'd my Radeon drivers and installed Intel 4953, opened up 3D Mark, updated TimeSpy and SysInfo, ran the benchmark again, and this time, bollocks. In my despair, I found myself scouring online forums for anyone else who'd shared this specific issue. And as you might imagine, looking for a specific ARC problem online is like looking for a needle in a stack of needles. I was lucky enough to find someone who'd had a very similar sounding issue with a Zen 2 chip, and that upgrading to Zen 3 resolved it for them. Well, that clearly wasn't going to help in my case, I already had Zen 3, but it did raise the possibility that my platform was the problem. Unfortunately, both my test rig and editing rig are AMD. Right now, the only other modern-ish motherboard and CPU I had on hand were an ASUS Z370 and an i9-9900K. Z370 doesn't natively support rebar, though I do have an updated BIOS on mine that enables it, but it is also limited to Gen 3 speeds. This could still be a bottleneck, the A380 only has an X8 interface, but at this point I was willing to give it a shot regardless. This was the last ditch effort, one final Hail Mary before I called it a day. I moved the drives over, checked everything was working, reinstalled 3D Mark, which had stopped working for some reason, and gave it one last... oh fuck it, I'm done. I don't know what this card's problem is. I'm sure someone will give me a suggestion, maybe I missed something blindingly obvious, so do kindly give me your theories in the comments. Sorry it was such a meaningless video, but I put more than a few hours into this test and I guess I wanted something to show for it, even if it was just a few minutes of me screaming into the uncaring void. As for the A380, I guess I'll see if I can get myself a refund and pick up a replacement, and maybe I'll get to make the video I intended sometime in the new year. In the meantime, if you got this far, thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.